Up next, we have uh, a, a local gent. Uh, does some podcasts and other things, and uh, I think I'll just say this is Dashiell Thompson, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for thank you for the applause. Thank you. Thank you, my girlfriend, for the applause. That was very nice of you. <laughs> to be my only supporter. Thank you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> uh, happy Mother's Day, right? Woo! Did you guys celebrate your moms? Or I like to say your your mommies. <laughs> Twenty nine. I still say mommy. I don't care. I have no shame. I say mommy. Uh, <laughs> I took my mom out to lunch, and then we took a walk in the park, and it wasn't long until my mom was like, you know, uh, sometimes there's cougars out in this park, and uh, whenever they tell me there's a cougar, I go, fine, I'll leave. And I'm like, no, mom, no, don't tell me you're a cougar. This is terrible. Why would you say this? It's awful. It's not the only time my mom's embarrassed me. She wants to do a Michael Jackson impression, unprompted. I don't remember what the context was, but for some reason, it's me and my sister and my mom, and somehow Michael Jackson came up, and my mom goes, oh, yeah, MJ. Okay. <laughs> Hold on, what was that? <laughs> it's like, you know, Michael Jackson. I was like, you look like a guy who's never gambled before, but has too much confidence. <laughs> like, I'm going to win with crabs this time. It looks terrible, Mom. Uh, there was another time, though, that, like, the, I think the most embarrassing thing my mom's ever done was that uh, I was looking at some old baby photos recently, and uh, of me. Not just baby photos, I'm not like a weirdo. Uh, I was looking at some old baby photos found out that my mom decided to put a rat tail on my head as a toddler. That was disappointing. It's really tragic. Because you never see someone with a rat tail and think like, I bet that guy could do my taxes. But you do look at someone with a rat tail and think, that guy probably keeps all of his money in a shoebox, you know? Or he's like, I'm gonna get my money, government. Because uh, for some reason, like, Sometimes moms will put like mohawks on their toddlers and they're like, look, he's a little punk rocker. And my mom put a rat tail on my head and was like, hold on, I just choked. <clears throat> All good now. My mom put a rat tail on my head and was like, look, he's a little junkyard salvager. Isn't that cute? Yeah, go ahead. Play with some scrap metal, you little trash baby. Go ahead. Yeah, he just moved out back in a trailer with his girlfriend, Tammy. His best friend's a raccoon. And uh, that's what I think of people with rat tails. <laughs> I'm gonna do that joke one day, and someone in the audience has a rat tail, and he's like, hey man, that is accurate, and he just sits down and pets a rat tail. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, no, that makes sense at all. Full circle, full circle now. Uh, I also found some old uh, video of me playing basketball. That was disappointing. Because um, I feel like a lot of adults, especially guys for some reason, we all think like when we were young, that like we were athletes, and you find video evidence, and you're like, okay, well, I was not. <laughs> I have to amend some things to some people. Because uh, I found some video of me playing basketball for the first time, and I found out that every time our team scored a point, I would do a cartwheel down the court. Yeah, just like a little athletic disappointment to my father. It was so tragic. Just, yay, points, Dad! And he's like, son of a bitch, I got a theater kid, don't I? This is tragic. Just doing jazz hands on defense like kids go by. It's fine, score! We're all friends. Who wants to write a musical later? Get over here. That was pretty sad. Uh, but I think I really, like, when I was in, like, eighth grade, um, I was really into wrestling. I was, like, super into wrestling. Um, you, no one else? Okay, that's fair. Uh, me and my buddy, we even had, like, our own wrestling duo. We would, like, pretend wrestle with, like, stuffed animals and each other. It's not weird. It's super cool. And uh, we, we had, like, our own tag team duo uh, as well. We called ourselves the Venom Bros. Pretty cool. I'll hold for applause. It's kind of neat. And uh, they, oh, wow, actually, I never, that's never happened. Um, we call ourselves the Venom Bros, and uh, we even had like our own tagline as well. And because uh, you know how wrestlers, like in like the WWE, you know how ha they had like Ric Flair had like, woo, and The Rock was like, it's not this shit or whatever. I don't know. I wasn't like the biggest fan. But we had our own tagline as the Venom Bros, but it was like way worse. Ours was Venom Bros. <laughs> Which, as it turns out, is like like the least intimidating thing. Super not effective to be like a wrestler, but super effective if you want to get out of like an actual fight. That's actually really, someone's like, hey man, let's do it. And you're like, ah, and he's like, I don't want to be lit, never mind. They run away. I've used it, it works every time. Turns out no one wants to fight a liquor. No one does, ever. Let's see here. Uh, also in eighth grade, we got a new kid. Uh, his name was Nate, and he was weird. 
Um, there's just no other way to put that. But he wore, like, because I went to a private school and he'd wear, like, slacks and, like, collared shirts, like he was going to, like, chapel. Uh, but he did it every day. And I don't know about you guys, but every time I see, like, a middle school kid wearing, like, adult formal attire, it's like, you either, like, you just went to church or you just came from your parents' divorce proceedings where, like, a guy was like, is your dad a good man? The kid's like, I don't know. <laughs> that's what every middle schooler looks like in formal attire. That's what it looks like to me. And so uh, he was a weird kid, though. He wasn't a bully. He was just like, he was like obnoxious. He'd do things like he'd push like either books off your table. He'd be like, why? And he'd be like, <laughs> he'd be like all right, like, weirdo. What's wrong with you? He's terrible. And so like, uh, in private school, when when you when you're in private school as a kid, there's something a lot of people don't know. Um, you believe everything is the Antichrist, everything. Especially back in like, like the early 2000s, especially when like Left Behind came out, you were just like, everyone's the devil, where is he? I'm gonna unearth the Satan. And uh, my buddy one day, we're in like worship class and we're like singing songs, my buddy Sam nudged me and he's like, hey man, I think Nate's the Antichrist. And I was like, come on dude. And I looked over and Nate was like, here I am. I was like, no, you're right, no. He was like 14 with the voice of a 40 year old smoker. It was horrifying. Just seeing like a little kid being like, I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> like, oh jeez. It was awful. So like, also in middle school, uh, one of the big things that we loved to do was, uh, I personally, like I love PE. We play sports, right? The sports, Especially at that age, it teaches you a lot of like great stuff, like uh, you know, working with people, teamwork, uh, competition, all that kind of stuff. You also get to be active. Uh, but our our favorite thing to do was dodgeball, uh, which uh, teaches you basically nothing. Dodgeball's moral uh, lesson is uh, if someone dis disagrees with you, stone them. Uh, but we don't have rocks. Here's a dodgeball, and that's basically the moral lesson of dodgeball. And so. We were like really competitive, and our PE teacher at the time, he was like, he was like army reserve, and so he was like, dodgeball is war, life is war, and you were like, all right, calm down, coach, it's September 2001, you can get your shot, don't worry, and so, um, we, that's, you gotta think about that one, that's a deep cut, and so we, uh, in dodgeball, like, we would just peg each other with dodgeballs, like, we would try and hurt kids, and so this was like my time to like, I'm gonna just really hurt Nate, because he's a weird kid. And so one day, like, I see him, and he's, like, over there doing his little thing, and, like, I get a dodgeball, and, like, I wind up, because in middle school, your hands are tiny, so you have to throw, like, your whole, the whole weight of your body into it, like your medieval siege weapon. Like, you have to, like, a trebuchet, you just have to, like, hurl it like that. You want to get most power. And so, like, I wind up to go to throw, and, uh, but I wanted to see, because, like, See, in dodgeball, they tell you, you can't hit people in the head, right? Because you get out, they put you out. Uh, and also, like, for whatever other reasons, like, I don't know, it makes you, screws your head up or something. We didn't understand it. We were just like, whatever, fine, we'll hit him in the head. But I found a way to hurt him. And I, I rear back, and I look at him, and I'm like, Nate. But, like, I say it in, like, his dialect. I'm like, Nate. And he's like, Nate. He's like smoking on it. He's like, what? <laughs> the wife just left. Shut up. <laughs> like, you're 14. How do you have a wife? He's like, don't question me. I'm like, what's happening? Anyways, so I say, I say it to him. And he sees me. I rear back. I, I rock it at him, but I aim like low. I aim like at his feet. And so like when he, he sees it, but he sees it like a little too late, so he jumps. And he's like, eh. and I hit him like mid calf, and his legs go out, and his little Antichrist superstar head just hits the the uh, court, and I'm like, yeah. I find my bro, I'm like, get him, bros. And so, and so, like, I, I nailed him, right? Well, I was doing some research for this, like, this joke, this bit, and I, I messaged my buddy Sam, the one who was like, he's the Antichrist, and I was like, hey, man, um, whatever happened to that guy? And he's like, uh, oh, he's like, you know, I don't know what he's up to now, but uh, the last thing I heard was that after high school, he uh, went to jail for sodomizing a horse, and I was like, oh my god, that's why you don't hit people in the head with dodgeballs. Oh, I did that to that kid. I turned him into a monster. It's horrifying. I feel like you guys are on Nate's side a little bit. <laughs> that would actually be fair. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I have a girlfriend now, which is cool. Is my, she's over in the corner. Thank you. Thank you. So 
lack of excitement in her voice over there. Woo! Uh, I have a girlfriend now, which is awesome. I'm really glad that I have a girlfriend because now I don't have to go on first dates. I, I, that's the worst of all the dates because it's the most nerve wracking, don't know what you do. And every time anyone is on a first date, everyone has the same kind of goal. It's like maintain some sanity like for two hours and then you'll be golden. But like halfway through a first date, especially guys, we're just like, well, now I'm going to say something weird and ruin this night. <laughs> hey, how's the vibe? Are you horny? That's weird. Okay. Want we'll to get some apps? We'll split some apps? Nope. All right. That was me. The last first date I went on before I got my current girlfriend, um, we were out to dinner, and uh, I thought it was going well. I was asking her questions. I was like, what do you do for a living? She's like, I do this. I'm like, cool. I'm like, do you have kids? She's like, yeah, two. I'm like, awesome. And then I felt it like in the pit of my stomach. Just some weird subconscious part of me is like, we're going to say something dumb now. And I just want to, hey, where do your kids go to school? And I was like, I don't Why do I need that info? <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> She was like, why? And I'm like, I'm just, I'm just joshing, you know. It's, oh, man. If you ever want to end a date, just start asking about their kids. It's weird. Especially if you just met them. They don't want to tell you. I don't know why. Um, so, yeah, that didn't end well. <laughs> I, I got consecutive dates from her, though, which was cool. Third, like, three dates in, we're at her place, we're on a couch, and things are like, you know, as, as adults do, things are getting... <laughs> I make love like a cartoon character. You can't tell. That's what these noises are. Yeah! All right! Um, things are getting hot and heavy. And so I uh, I tell her, she's like, hey, should we move this upstairs? Because her kids were there. They were in the next room over. We're in her living room on our couch. They're in the next room over there asleep or whatever. She's like, we should move this upstairs. Sometimes my kids come out to get like a glass of water or food or whatever. And uh, me being a comic thought this is like a great time for a callback. And I go, uh, no, let him watch. She's like, the fuck out. I was like, that's fair, yeah, see you later. That's, I can see why I did that. <laughs> that makes sense. So far, it feels like the crowd is mostly on everyone else's side but mine. <laughs> and all these stories, they're like, you're a bad man. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. Um, oh, what else? I, uh, I've been through some breakups in my 20s. Uh, Couple bad ones. Uh, the worst one though was uh, I was like in 24 and my girlfriend broke up with me for whatever reason. She was like, Are you still live with your mom or whatever? I was like, All right. <laughs> hey, Vicky. And so I, because uh, you know how like you go through a breakup and like some time passes and you think you've healed and then you drink like a beer and you're like, It's not happy. No. <laughs> the pain is still there. That happened to me. Like uh, six months went by after this breakup. I was down for ballast. I was out drinking with my buddy. I thought I was, you know, over it. I was not. And uh, I get like six to ten beers in me or whatever. And uh, I tell my, uh, I tell my friend, I'm like, hey man, I just, like I get this idea in my head. And this happens a lot when you drink a lot. You get ideas, and they're never good. I don't know if you guys know this, but every idea you have when you're drunk is a bad, it's a bad idea. And so I'm like, hey man, I'm gonna sl I'm gonna go out the back of a bar because I got this idea in my head. I'm gonna win them the love of my life back. I'm gonna win her back. Uh, the only problem is, if any of your friends leave the back exit of a bar, you should definitely stop them because they're on their way to do something super reckless and stupid. Because no one's like, man, I'm ten shots deep. Just remember, God, I file my taxes. I'll slip out the back. It's cool. No, they're gonna be like, oh man, I'm ten shots deep. Just remember, I got a shit on a car. I'm gonna slip out the back. So that's basically what I was going to do. I went out the back as her texting my ex. I'm like, babe, I love you. I want you back. Let's do this. She's like, you know, no or whatever. And so I decide I'm going to run. I'm running 20 blocks across the Oregon State campus to my ex's house. I thought this was a good idea. And so I'm running, and I'm like yelling at people. I'm going to win the love of my life back. People are like weirdly supportive down there. Drunk people are like, good idea, man. Need help. It was weird. <laughs> And so I'm running, I get to her house, I've been texting her. I think in my head, I'm like, this is a good idea. And then a truck pulls up and three dudes get out in front of her house in sweatsuits, like the comfiest street gang you've ever seen. It's like, grab dirt, 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 but I'm more cozy. And so they form a wall between me and my ex. And I'm like, uh-oh, I'm about to probably get beat up. Because I'm not gonna take on three dudes, look at me. I don't look like I fight. And so uh, my ex is out of the house now. She's on the other side of the wall of the terror. And I'm, I'm talking to her. I'm like, babe, let's, let's talk. 
I, th- I got some stuff to say. And then one of the guys steps forward and is like, hey, man, maybe you've had enough to drink. I don't know what his accent is. It wasn't in the South. I don't know why I just went Southern. Hi, buddy. You better get out of here. Pew, pew, pew. No. Uh, they're totally Oregonian. So, uh, and, and these guys, by the way, they're uh, freshman guys in college, uh, which if you don't know is typically the worst demographic of people um, because they have, like, all the freedom and all of the hormones they're ever gonna have. So there's just these like three little confused horny gremlins running around in sweatsuits going, ah, fight or sex, I don't know, I'm not confident yet. It's terrible. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm like, babe, let's talk off to the side. I'm like, why don't you and Trevor and Skylar and Eric will have a cuddle puddle back of your co-ed. And so me and my ex, we talk to the side, I convince her, and we're chatting, I'm like, babe, I love you, I want you back. And she's like, you're not wearing a shirt. That's a good point. And then I went home. Why would that work? That's a stupid plan. It was a really dumb plan. Went home. Next day, I, uh, I checked my text sober, which is important. And uh, when I thought I had texted her, babe, I love you. I want you back. I had just sent her, I'm coming for you. And that's it. That's all I sent. Like, I was drunk, and I was like, babe, I had two minute words. And I, I'm coming. And apparently, she called back up, which is fair, which is fair, because I terrified her. To death. <laughs> oh boy. Um, I've traveled a lot in my life, which is pretty fun. Uh, I, in like 2013, I backpacked across Europe. It was super cool. Um, I was going through airport security once, and uh, I've never had trouble in airport security ever. And because, uh, like, obvious, like, I just, why? I never would. I, you know? You know what I mean? I, why would I have trouble? I don't, I'm not a bad person. But anyways, I'm going through this one time, and I have my backpack with me and my carry-on, and I set it on that conveyor belt that like scans everything. Set it on there. I don't know about you guys, but for some reason, whenever I do this, like I know I'm not. I, there's no there's no bomb in my bag, but for some reason, like a small part of me is like, man, I hope you don't find a bomb. But, like it's weird, but it's like a weird paranoia that kind of like persists in your head. And so I put the bag on the conveyor belt, goes through alarm sound, and I'm like, what could this be? So this lady takes the bag, she takes it out this side, she sets it down, she opens it, and I'm like, I know what's in this backpack. There's nothing terrible in here. I know the pack just closed. And then she pulls out a 12-inch railroad spike. Yeah, you know the thing they're looking for? Yeah, they found it. Yeah, and I was like, Bleh. And for some reason, like, my fight or flight kicked in, and I just went, <laughs> you can have it. Like, that just absolves me of all wrongdoing. And the crazy thing is, she was like, I know, get out of here. And I was like, what the fuck? What? You just let me go? You should ask me at least one question. If you find a railroad spike, first of all, trains don't run anymore, pretty much, right? Like, we're all in agreement, trains barely exist. So if someone has a railroad spike, you should ask them, Where'd you get this? And here's the thing, if they had pulled me aside and asked me, hey, where'd you get this railroad spike? My story of how I got it is flimsy at best. I'd been like, well, I was walking, found it, thought it was cool, put it in my bag. You think you're going to jail now? I'm like, that's fair. Getting back up my story. You guys have been fun. I think I'm pretty close to my time. I think I got like maybe one more, one more story to tell you. These aren't jokes. Um, to be honest, I'll just, these are stories. Uh, when I was in Europe, though, uh, I stopped in, uh, me and my buddy were in Spain. Uh, we meet these uh, two guys, pretty cool guys. Uh, they were from Germany, and uh, they were like, uh, like, hey, you guys know about all these pickpockets here in Barcelona? We're like, yeah, no, we're away. We've got money going for that, because we don't plan on having sex. And so, um, they're like, oh, do you know about these Nigerians? And I was like, all right, calm down, jeez. <laughs> what do you mean? They're like, no, 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 like, Nigerian prostitutes, they walk up to you, they flirt with you, they work in teams of people to pickpocket you. And we're like, we're not going to run into that. A few hours go by, it's like four in the morning. We step out into this, like, main street in Barcelona. And uh, sure enough, over here, I hear, hey, boy. Which, by the way, my Nigerian accent is... Jamaican, so we're gonna know this collectively and then just move forward. Okay, don't judge me on that. Reason. She goes, Hey, boy, and I see her. And by the way, she does not look like what you would imagine a prostitute looks like. She's wearing like 
jean shorts and a Gap t-shirt in flip-flops. Like she ran errands for her kids that day and it was like, mm, not my prostitute. And so she starts walking towards me and my fight or flight again kicked in and I just went, no, and I started running, just sprinting. Apparently my fight or flight uh, isn't fight or flight, it's just leave a man behind because I left my best friend. I didn't even know where he was. He didn't look at him, I was just like, it's very still. So I take off and then she takes off after me. Yeah, I met apparently the most ambitious prostitute in all of Barcelona, just like, I'm getting money. And so she's chasing after me, and I'm yelling, no, 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 and she's yelling back in pretty good English, what is no, what is the meaning of no? And I'm like, you know. <laughs> so anyways, I get away, thankfully. Uh, so there's no moral to this story or end, but you guys endured, as I did tonight, and I thank you. So, have a wonderful night. Mm -hmm.